Hi, hope you had a great day. You're watching JG Entertainment, and for this video, I'm gonna give you my top 10 scenes of Wakanda Forever, ranked from worst to best. And this movie was amazing. I absolutely love this movie. It has so many great scenes. In fact, there's a lot more than 10 scenes, and which is why I might have to out more mentions. And even beyond that, I, I wish I could put a lot more scenes into this video. But if not, it would just be a huge long, long video. So yeah, we're just gonna keep it at 10 scenes with three honorable mentions. So yeah, let's get started with this uh, video. But before that, I just wanna give you a warning: spoilers for this movie, obviously. So if you have not seen the movie, then please kick out and then watch it later uh and definitely make sure you watch the movie because it's really really good and then just come back to this video and enjoy it so yeah all right now that you've been warned for the spoilers let's get started with the spoiler talk so let's go with the honorable mentions and the first honorable mention that i have is going to be whenever namor breaks a helicopter at the start of the movie and like his people like attack the ship that is uh hunting that vibranium it was such a cool scene it was really really cool from the sirens at the start that are making like the people jump off the ship to like whenever they actually start attacking and everything and then to whenever namor like you know the girl escapes with the helicopter and then namor like grassy helicopter and he like spins it around and he basically ends up killing them like that was just super incredible super scary like it really makes namor look like a threat you like namor is such a threat and that was such a cool introduction for him it like shows like his wings and like it's like in the dark it's like a shadowy silhouette whenever you see like the helicopter fall and i was like Mm, just super super awesome because I when I was watching the scene I was like what's the wind after the airplane like do they have wind power or something and then I was like oh my god it's Namor and that was super sick so yeah just really awesome stuff all right moving on to my next honorable mention and that is going to be whenever Akoi and Shuri go recruit Riri and that scene was super super funny which is why I have it here it's not in my top 10 just because it's not like a incredible scene but it was just super funny I remember watching the theater and everybody was laughing Whenever uh, 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 I think Riri was like, you should be conscious of the way you look. And it's like, with that, walking around with that ashy forehead and everything, it was just like super, super funny. And whenever she brings like this, the 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 thing the weapon into like the room and, and Shuri's like you brought the weapon to the room and everything it was just super hilarious it was just super super funny uh, the chemistry that the three actors had in that scene it was just perfect so yeah that scene is in my honorable mentions doesn't quite make it to my top 10 but it was pretty pretty funny all right moving on to my next honorable mention and my last honorable mention and that is going to be the, the black panther lives which means that it's whenever Shuri gets the black panther suit and she falls down the the, 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 the top and she like falls down to Baku's place and she unwraps with Baku and then boom the Black Panther lives. It was just a super inspiring, hopeful scene, and it was pretty awesome. It's not quite in my top 10 because there's a lot of other scenes that I want to talk about that are in my top 10, but it was a super, super cool scene, and it was just like, yo, Black Panther's back, and it was just super awesome. So, yeah. All right, now let's actually get to my top 10. So, let's move on for my number 10, and that's going to be Namor's backstory, making his him and Talokan like uh kind of like the aztec culture which is super genius i think it was super super awesome to uh have that because come on that like name one of the comics is not that name one of the comics is just from Atlantis and everything but this gives it like a whole different perspective and it kind of really fits in with wakanda you know wakanda is representing like african culture there's a completely different thing that is like aztec culture and it's just super super awesome i absolutely love this change and even though the the scenes were really nice i, I, I like the scenes i like the backstory you know you get to see like the, the mom of neymar drink the vibranium and so does the whole people and they have to go to the water and everything and then you got the full backstory and that was pretty awesome it was really good when neymar whenever neymar first sees slavery it was like he was like completely in shock and everything and all that type of stuff i completely understand it and i thought it was super super awesome super cool the shot that they have with kid namor and then like the mansion burning down super awesome stuff brian cooler really directed the heck out of it and it was just super cool stuff but the main reason why this is here is just because of the way that it made it, it changed namor and his kingdom into like a fitting the culture of, of Aztecs and Talocan and everything. And it's just super, super incredible. I love that. It was genius move from Ryan Cooler and the writers of this movie. It was just full on genius. And it was really incredible. So yeah, that was super awesome, which is my number 10. It's my number 10 scene. It was a great scene. And it was just a genius idea that I think really impressed me a lot. All right, I'm on to my number nine spot. And that's going to be the highway fight. And this is whenever they're kind of trying to escape from the FBI, Riri, Shuri, and uh, Okoye. And they're escaping from the FBI. And you know, at first it's all fun and games. You know, you have, uh, you have uh, Ruby over here testing his suit out for the first time. You have uh, Shuri in the in the motorcycle. You have Akoya uh, in the car and everything. And uh, uh, she did some really cool moves. Like whenever she put the spear through the car and like picked up the car from the back, it was just like that's super awesome. It was super super sick. I was like, mm, sick stuff. Like it was just incredible. Uh, and uh, Shuri uh, uh, Shuri didn't have that much crazy moves. I mean, she was cool and everything, but the scene didn't really pick up that much into the Talokan people that showed up. Like they showed up and they meant business. You know, they meant business and with the uh, water grenades, which first of all, the water grenades is just an amazing, amazing idea, amazing concept. And they were definitely a threat. And then like they blow up everything. 
and it was just super awesome. And then boom, we had the one v one between the Talokan person, like the general. I think he's a general, and Akoi, and it was just an amazing thing. It was like with the spear and everything, and it was super super awesome. They were both fighting hand to hand combat and everything. And those are the type of things that I really like to see. I love, I love to see hand to hand combat. It reminded me a little bit of uh, the Winter Soldier and everything because it was in the highway and everything. But it was just super super awesome. I'd love to see the hand to hand combat, and it was cool. And you saw Akoi getting hit hard, you know, whenever he like. Uh, he made her walk into like his huge uh, sphere and everything. It was just like super awesome stuff. I was like, mm, this is incredible, incredible stuff. And then, you know, she really can't win. She can't save Shuri. And then they end up taking Shuri and Riri and everything. And it's just like, mm, what an amazing, amazing scene. I was like, this is incredible. So yeah, great stuff. I really enjoyed that. All right, moving on to my number eight spot. And that is going to be Namor versus Shuri in the final battle. And I thought it was a really nice battle. I thought it was really cool. First of all, I thought it was really cool that the have was Namor's weakness. You know, that's his kryptonite the fact that he has to stay wet i was like that makes sense and i think it's pretty cool i was like that's that's pretty awesome um and it makes sense like okay i see why shuri could beat him because before i could not see how shuri would beat name or at all and uh this kind of gives it like the plot armor that she needs without just like take taking the namor's powers away for no reason you know they give a reason for why he wasn't as strong in this final battle which first of all i really appreciate that because a lot of times they just make the hero that just started fighting beat the villain that has been fighting for ages just for no reason um force awakens i'm looking at you right now so this makes a lot of sense that it would be because he actually has a certain weakness that if he can't get water he'll be weaker so i think that was pretty cool but the fight itself was super awesome it showed why shuri and the black panther in general was a threat you know with the claws like whenever she scratched namor's face i was like oh and his and his back i was like no and whenever she cut off his wing i was like no not the wings you can't just mess with the wings like that they're they're so important you know i felt so bad i felt so 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 bad so that that really sucked um but it was like an amazing fight i, I really like this fight it's obviously straight off the comics with black panther and namor and it was just super awesome stuff you know whenever namor stabbed shuri i was like oh my god is this really happening and everything and it's just really cool stuff and then like uh shuri's character arc come like comes full circle here whenever she decides to not kill namor more and all type of stuff it just it just really was an improvement over the first movie in my opinion between Kamanga versus T'Challa I think this was a better fight and I really felt the emotion of Shuri wanting revenge against Namor because of course Namor just killed him all I mean of course why wouldn't he want revenge so it's just super awesome stuff really powerful scene and a really cool fight to have so yeah this was gonna go down as one of the best fights in the MC I thought it was a really enjoyable fight all right, we're on to my number seven spot, and that is going to be the ending of the movie. And the end of the movie was super, super powerful, like incredibly powerful. And what exactly am I talking about? I'm talking about whenever Shuri uh, goes to the to like uh, right next to the ocean, and she has she has like fire uh, going on a fire a fireplace or whatever, and she brings like the funeral uh, um, thing that she was wearing. I forgot what it was called, the funeral thing, the funeral clothes or whatever. Uh, which they had a whole scene about setting it up earlier about whenever you bring your funeral clothes means that you know you've accepted their dead or something, Some, something like that. It was it was around those lines, um, and and stuff like that is I thought it was super incredible. In fact, that scene that said that that scene earlier was really cool, but the ending brought it all full circle burning finally the clothes that she wore for T'Challa's funeral and it, it just made it really awesome I was like this is really powerful stuff and then we see like a montage of uh, T'Challa and therefore Shadow Boseman kind of like just getting to see his legacy obviously we all know that he tragically passed away and everything so the fact that we got to see that it really hit the audience I was like wow this, this is incredible the music also was uh, perfect like, like it was just incredible I could not think of any better song to place in that spot I was like Whoa, that's really powerful stuff. So yeah, it's just I think it was just amazing stuff that they did that, and it was just like mm, it just hit really hard. It was just a great way to end the movie. Really emotional stuff, really heavy packed um, emotion, and I was like mm, perfect. So yeah, that's why I like the ending. That's why it's my number seven spot. All right, we're well, to my number six spot. That is going to be the Killmonger uh, cameo that there was in this movie. Whenever Shuri finally drinks the uh, her uh, the herb that she created artificially, which is super awesome. So she finally drinks it and she goes and you know she thinks that she's gonna see T'Challa or her mom or her dad or something. And guess who she sees? She sees Killmonger, which is super super awesome, super incredible. It's like oh yes, it's Killmonger. I kind of already knew it was gonna be he was gonna be in the movie because come on, it's Mercury Jordan. You kind of already know he's in the movie. You're like yeah, he's gonna be in the movie. There was a bunch of rumors and a bunch of stuff going on uh, whenever they were filming the movie. And sure enough, he was in the movie, so that was pretty cool. However, I think that the fact that he was in the movie actually fit very well narratively. I was kind of worried that they were just going to come up with some really weird plot device to kind of bring him back. But no, this was actually 
brought very well um because it fits shuri character like amazing though she just lost her brother she's lost her mom she lost her father and, uh, also and every like a long time ago sure but she still lost her father and then t'challa and her mom really close to each other and like her kingdom just got almost as and everything so you don't know she's in a tough spot right now she's in a super tough spot so of course she's full of rage so of course that whenever she goes to the astral plane boom she's this killmonger and killmonger is super cool you know whenever she's calling he's calling everybody uh all the past kings weak saying that only him and T'Challa were the ones strong enough to go help the rest of the world and everything. I mean, all to, all, his whole monologue, ever since the first movie and now it translates to this movie, it's just perfect. He has a missing script. Like, the script just does so much favors to come on. And then Michael Jordan plays him perfectly. And they, it was just a super cool scene. Visually speaking, it was super awesome when the throne room just went on fire. Really, like, reminding us of the... Of the First movie out again, and you know Michael B. Jordan, uh, his his clothing was super awesome with like the white thing that he was wearing. It was just like mm, great, incredible, good costume design as well. It was just super awesome. So the scene was just super awesome, very incredibly acted, and like I said, I love the fact that it fits Shuri's character arc with it, her wanting revenge and Killmonger being like, you got to be strong enough to do it. I mean, this guy just killed your mom in front of you and this and is threatening your kingdom. You got to kill him. You know, I thought that was super awesome stuff, and Killmonger definitely worked for the scene and for Shuri's character arc. So yeah. That's why it's my number six spot. All right, we're on to my number fifth spot, and we're getting to the top five now. And these are really, really incredible scenes, like really incredible scenes. So my number fifth spot is going to be when the death of Queen Ramonda, and this was an amazing, amazing scene. And therefore, with that death, I was mostly talking about the whole attack on Wakanda, which was super, super awesome. I mean, the attack on Wakanda was super awesome from the way that they started flooding the the, the place to the way that they uh, the the whole army of Talokan started showing up, and then Namor shows up, and it was just like incredible. You know, whenever Baku tries to hit Namor, and boom, he hits him through the chest. I mean, it was some really strong stuff. It was like, wow, this is like, like this is this is definitely scary. Like, I would be. That that that's scared to just like be in that place. Like no no no, I don't want to get attacked by water, floating or nothing. But yeah, but what I, I'm specifically focusing on is the death of Queen Ramonda. And the death of Queen Ramonda was incredible. So first you see Namor like on the on like the windshield of like when behind the so it's like the glass. Then it's Queen Ramonda and the Namor's over here flying, and he's like telling her to like come on join forces. And she's like obviously like no, you're not gonna have the kid or whatever. Uh, so he kind of leaves, and you're like okay, that's interesting. He's leaving, and then boom, he comes back. He throws a bunch of grenades. Uh, of course, after he stabbed the glass, which is super awesome, and boom, it blows everything away. And 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 boom, the Riri falls in the water, and you know Queen Ramonda makes it life, but she goes to save Riri, and then she in the process of saving Riri, she drowns. She actually drowns, and it was just an incredible shot. Whenever you see her head just laying down in the water with like the white thing that she was wearing, and it's like mm, that's just really really powerful. And then whenever Shuri gets into the room and everything. And it was like, hold her back, hold her back. Because, of course, they don't want them to, they don't want Namor to kill uh, Shuri. So, we're just trying to hold Shuri back from getting close to Namor. And it was just like, wow, that's just a, some powerful stuff. And then Namor's line in this scene is like, mm. whenever he says, bury your dead, mourn your losses, you are a queen now. Wow, just that's just incredible. And he just proceeds to threaten them by saying that he's going to come back next time with his whole army to destroy Wakanda. And wipe and wipe it off the face of the earth. That's literally what he said. And I was like, "Wow, this guy's an absolute menace." Namor is like super cold and just an awesome character. But since then, you see the grief. I mean, the actor of Shuri, the teacher, right? Did an amazing job in that scene. And so did the actor for Queen Amanda. I think she did an amazing job playing all her scenes in this movie. So Raw, this was just an amazing, super powerful scene that was just like. Mm, it just hit you right in the guts in the movie. So yeah, and also super memorable. I've watched the movie a week ago, and I can still remember it like like super perfect. So it was just an amazing scene. All right, went to my fourth spot, and that's going to be the opening scene. And this opening scene was just very powerful. You, of course, you don't know how the movie's going to open, so it just starts. Shuri's freaking out in the lab. She's trying to uh, to make the uh, artificial herb and everything while her uh, brother's dying right now. And, you know, uh, you know, she's, like, trying. She tests the thing, and then it fails, and then, boom, Queen Amanda, her mom, walks in, and she's in tears. And you as an audience know automatically what just happened. But, of course, you know, you still have it. And then Shuri tells, like, his her AI, I don't know what her AI name was. And it was, like, a uh, battle on King T'Challa or T'Challa or something. And then, you know, uh, you know, Queen Ramonda's, like, he, he, he's with his ancestors now. Or he's with the ancestors now. And it was, like, wow. It was just a powerful scene. Like, super powerful. The acting there 
from Leticia Wright and uh, Queen Ramonda and, and for Angela Bassett, I think that's her, the actor's name. I mean, wow, it was just super impressive, just hit super hard. And then the silent in logo of Marvel with like all the pictures being from uh, Chadwick Boseman as T'Challa. Uh, I mean, it was just, wow, it just hit super hard. I was like, that's some incredible, incredible stuff. And it was silent, you know, it was dead silent. That's silent in the theater, it just, you just felt the loss you know it was such an incredibly strong opening and super emotional and everything and just i think it was just perfect a perfect start i cannot think of anything better just perfect start and you know they killed him off like way that he that, that uh charlie Bosman actually that name of the life you know they were like it's this disease that just couldn't be cured he was suffering in silence which of course is what happened in, in real life he was suffering in silence he never told anybody about cancer about the cancer that he had uh, just like his very his family like it was a super close circle so i thought that was a really really powerful and really interesting and it was like mm, it just hit so hard so that was some incredible stuff all right well to my top three answering the top three and that's going to be the scene where queen armanda fires okoye from being the captain of the melaje or, or the melaje in general and this scene was just so so powerful angela was said delivers so much in this scene whenever she says uh and this was in the trailers like the line was in the trailers but it, i i did not think it was in this context whenever she's like i am queen of the most powerful nation in the world and my whole and i have lost my whole family or something and it's just like mm, she just delivered the line amazing the acting was incredible like it was just super incredible and akoya you know you feel for akoya too you're like because you know akoya you've seen you've grown with her you've got all the character development it's just super awesome and she's like please let me die and for say working for the throne or whatever and everything and then like the concept like i mean she did she did put a spear up for the love of her life and then she's like you know what i've sacrificed you know uh, kind of reminded me of Andrew a little bit but she's like um my whole family's dead and everything and you were with killmonger whenever he took the throne and everything and i was like wow this is just some powerful powerful stuff I and mean, it was such an emotional scene the acting in the scene it was just super strong i mean the acting was just incredible i felt for both sides. I thought both sides had an incredible point. And I was just like, ugh, you, just, you could just feel the raw emotion. Like, it was just, mm, like, that's what I'm talking about. This is this, These are the scenes that I live to see. You know I mean? These scenes are just amazing. And uh, Angela said, like I said, really delivered for Queen Ramonda. I hope that she gets nominated for next year for the awards because I think she definitely has her nomination. And who knows, maybe even a win for a supporting actor. I think she did a great, great job playing Queen Ramonda. And this scene is like the one that I think portrays it the most. I think it was just an incredible scene playing grief, playing anger, playing the strong leader. I mean, she was a strong queen. She had what it she had what it took to be a queen. Like she was incredible. So yeah, just an amazing amazing scene. Come on, the the line, I am the I am queen of the most powerful nation in the world. I mean, just mm, beautiful. All right, my to my second uh spot and this scene is kind of cheating cuz it's not technically in the movie, but it's going to be the post credit scene. And the post credit scene, mm Mm, it just hit so so hard. I mean, it was like, mm, you know, it, when you find out that T'Challa had a son with Nakia, and it, wow, that was I, I did not expect it at all. And then whenever he said uh, that his name was T'Challa, wow, that was just like super powerful. I was like, wow, that's that's mm, it just. It, I mean, it's like it worked perfect. You know, there was people that saying that they want to recast T'Challa, but like this way, it kind of continues T'Challa the character. What are recasting Chadwick Boseman and the, uh, from the role? You know, but instead getting a new character that kind of continues his legacy. And I thought that was just the best way to do it. And it was just, mm, it just works incredible. The kid actor they chose to play uh, T'Challa, uh, little young T'Challa, is just so adorable. He played him so well. You you could just feel the emotion. Nakia was perfect in that scene, and Shuri. Mm, like the, the teacher right once again delivered a, uh, in this movie like she delivered all throughout the movie but this scene specifically mm, it just hit so hard and I just it was just so emotional to see and then whenever they asked if Queen like, Ramonda met the child and Nakia said yes I was like I was so happy and I was like mm. it's just it's just it's just that it's that scene that just gets you so emotional but also kind of gets you so happy I'm like that's that's so beautiful you know that that's so incredible like I could not think of any better post credits scene. It was just awesome. Sets up the future, but at the same time, it's just like this continues the legacy. It's 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 just perfect. And the actors did an amazing job. Ryan Coogler did an amazing job directing that scene. And honestly, it was just the most emotional scene for me in the movie. Um, it was really really good. It was just really really good. That's all I gotta say about it. It was just amazing. So yeah.
All right, now move on to my first spot and first place from place dun, 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 It's gonna be whenever Namor shows Shuri Talokan, and that was just an amazing, amazing scene. I thought it was a super amazing scene, um, super creative, like super creative. You know, have the current and you know Shuri's in like the suit, like the big suit, and you know Namor starts to get in the current, and you're like, oh, this is really interesting, very interesting. We are fast traveling through the city and everything, and it, boy, was the city magical and the music. The song, I mean, it literally has become a TikTok trend and everything just because of how good it is. It's like, it's just that good. It's really good. It just fits in very amazing. And it was so powerful to see just the local. I thought it was an amazing scene. Like, I want a full spin off of this place. I want a full, full spin off. Like, I don't even want the local one anymore. If we can have this spin off, like, I just thought it was incredible. I, for some reason, I, something about underwater cities has always, has always interested me a lot. So, this really was incredible. And it was a lot more of a realistic take than the one that we had in Aquaman. Aquaman was more like of a fantasy you know atlantis is like a fantasy place and i think aquaman did a great job for what it was but i think this was a lot more realistic and kind of that vibe that it was more realistic kind of made me like it a lot more to be honest um i love the scene whenever they show like the kids are playing soccer in underwater mm, just amazing stuff you know really representing like the mexican culture you know soccer is the sport over there just like basketball was a sport for black panther one you know i think this i think it was super awesome at the end of black panther one whenever they were playing basketball well, here we have soccer for Tolokan, which I think was super awesome. Um, you know, you see like the kingdom, the way that the light shines because he kind of created the Lokan's own sun. I mean, all that type of stuff was just incredible. The whole place was incredible. You know, you meet the symbol, the, this symbol right here, which, you know, it's really amazing to just have a symbol, you know, Wakanda forever created this symbol for the, a certain culture. And now this symbol for another culture. I mean, it's just super awesome stuff. I, I really love representation. And the whole place, I mean, the whole thing was just magical. Like I felt like Shuri whenever she was in that scene, I was like just amazed. You know, the animals, the people, the way that they live, everything was just it just hit super deep i was like this is just just magical i want a full spin off with the lokan and name more like asap i need more of this i need to see more of how this works i need to see a lot more like everything was just beautiful everything was awesome and like i said it was super super creative everything about the team was super creative from the t uh, the way of travel you know like the, there's like that one really fast current that there is to the soccer plane on the water all that type of stuff was just super incredible so yeah, everything for me about the scene just worked. The way they represented the culture, the music. I think the song was called in La Brisa. Amazing stuff. Namor, Shuri. I mean, the, the, you know, you felt the vibe. And you know, whenever he was like, now you see what I have to protect. Like, you really felt that. Like, you felt like Namor just wants to protect his people and his place for Talocan. So it, it was just amazing stuff. So yeah, it just... The one word that I used to describe it is that this scene was just magical. I remember being in the theater, watching the scene, and it was just pure magic. I was like amazed it was just mm. if i could see it again for the first time i would definitely go and see it again for the first time because it was just an, an experience you know so yeah that's why it's my favorite scene of the whole entire movie so yeah that's my top 10 scenes for wakanda forever tell me what you think about it down in the comments tell me your own list on the comments or at least tell me your top three i'm very curious or at least your favorite i am very curious so tell me your your own list down in the comments i'm very curious i wonder what your favorite scene is i really do as well as please please, please leave a like in this video it'll be very helpful so please 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 really Leave a like. As well, subscribe for a lot more content. I'm working on more videos for Quantum Forever, including character strength. I already covered the box office. I'm going to cover the second we can drop and everything. So just make sure to subscribe for a lot more Quantum Forever content. And so, yeah, that'll be it for this video. Thanks for watching. Hope you have a great rest of your day. And this